New report reveals the declining role of religion in American society. We have further evidence. <laughs> The new report by the Public Religion Research Institute, or PRRI, showed that, shows that fewer Americans consider religion important in their lives considered, compared to a decade ago, indicating significant changes in the religious landscape of the United States. The study, titled Religion and Congregations in a Time of Social and Political Upheaval, surveyed 6,600 adults across all 50 states. The findings revealed that only 16% of Americans now view religion as the most important thing in their life, down from 20% in 2013. Additionally, only 36% of Americans see religion as one of many important aspects in their life at all, compared to 43% a decade ago. Meanwhile, the proportion of religiously unaffiliated Americans has grown from 16% in 2006 to 27%. However, Christianity remains the dominant religious affiliation, with Christians of color accounting for 25% of the population. The report also highlights the increasing involvement of churches in political and social issues, with a majority of churchgoers believing that congregations should provide perspectives on pressing social issues. So, Armin, mm. our growth is imminent. No. <laughs> mm -hmm. We're taking over! Um... You know what I like about this? It's talking about the declining role of religion because a lot of atheists and secular activists think that our battle is for people to be non-religious or atheists, right? Mm -hmm. Which is a good win, which is a good win, but we are also winning in many different other ways, right? For example, if you have a Muslim or a Christian, right, who went from having religion to be a major part of their life, to being somebody that religion, they're still a Muslim or a Christian or a Jew or a Hindu, to being somebody whose religion is not a major part of their life, we're still winning. So the battle is not just between, the ideological battle is not between religious people and non-religious people. The ideological battle is within every individual. So every individual, if we, basically this is a process of liberalization and secularization of each individual, not just the um, you know people leaving religion so there's a battle in, in everyone's mind and if you could make the sources of influence in that person's mind the sources of morality and decision making less and less to be a religious one you're winning so if you have a muslim that it went from like the, the their thought process their the decision making to be i don't know 10 percent influenced by religion and 90 percent influenced by the podcast they listen to the friends they're with the shows they watch the books they read the the friends they hang out with if that goes from 10 percent to five percent that's a win even though that person is still a christian or a muslim that's a huge win you're winning that battle ideological battle within that one individual and more the more we go there so even if we go before we even go get to a world where most most people are non-religious uh, or atheists we we will eventually get there but before we get there sooner than that we're going to get to a world where being religious and non-religious is not going to make that much of a different difference it's about the importance the, of it in someone's life yeah exactly they could still mm -hmm. be religious but it's just increasingly less important Yes. There's, yeah, greater exactly. sources of other influences in their life, which I think is a positive. Yes, and this is what conservative religious people are afraid of, because they are saying that they, the Muslims, for example, brag about their numbers growing, okay? You're num yeah, but their numbers might be growing, but it's, it's becoming more and more difficult to tell a, a liberal Muslim from an atheist person with the background of Islam. It's becoming more and more mm. difficult. And they're noticing that. Like people like Daniel Hanraju are noticing that. That, you know, we're going to get to a place where it doesn't even mean anything to say you're a Muslim or you're a Christian because you're just living the, the very same life as an atheist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's so interesting. It reminds me of recently, I watched a, like a 45 minute video by Yasser Qadi about parents freaking out that their children were not marrying other Muslims. And it was like even worse, like my daughter is marrying an atheist. Like, how did this happen? And he's like, Islamically, those grandchildren, they cannot have a, they cannot get married in the nikah. 
And if there's no Nika, mm -hmm. the, those children are not your grandchildren. Islamically, they are not your grandchildren. Like, how brutal is that? And he was exactly. saying, if you guys want to prevent this, we need to start making the halal easier. He's like, we need to have our young people like meeting each other. It's He was actually kind of saying that we shouldn't be so strict on sex segregation. We need to make it easier for our Muslim kids to marry each other because we're shooting ourselves in the foot. If you make the halal difficult, the haram is easy. <laughs> Let me show you an example. <clears throat> Just five hours ago, Danny Hagaji released a video on his mm -hmm. channel saying... Um, Islamic gender mis mixing gone wild. Who brought us here? So this is like a good channel to see how <laughs> like the conservative Muslims are complaining that now in the US, in the mosques, they have genders mixing. So they're seeing like at the same time that they're bragging that more people are becoming Muslims, they're also noticing that the Muslims are living less Islamic lives and they're panicking about it, right? So anyways, I am going to maybe review this video either uh, um, with Secular Rarity or Harris Sultan. I don't know when, but I'm going to do that. Uh, all right, let me... I want to see that so badly. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. Get my best-selling book, Why There Is No God, for free. Click on the link for it in the description.